Hi, I am uh, Roger from Tennessee. I identify as a political independent. Uh, sometimes I call myself, I guess, a lapsed Republican, for lack of a better phrase. Um, I call myself that, I guess, because um, I uh, was unable to bring myself to support Donald Trump in 2016, and I had a number of Republicans tell me that if I couldn't support Donald Trump, then I couldn't call myself a Republican. So I didn't leave the party. I was booted out, I guess. A uh, little history. Uh, I consider myself a lifelong Republican, a child of the 80s, and a big fan of Ronald Reagan. Uh, he's one, still one of my political heroes. Uh, I still believe he's the best president I've ever known in my lifetime. Uh, I actually got so into Republican and conservative politics that as a teenager, uh, I actually subscribed to William F. Buckley Jr.'s National Review. Uh, I would get it every two weeks in the mail. I'd be very excited. I'd read it cover to cover, just to give you some idea of how cool I was uh, during my teenage years. Uh, sadly, uh, my coolness has not much improved since then, but my politics are roughly the same. My first vote for president when I was old enough was in 1992 for uh, George Herbert Walker Bush, uh, followed that with uh, Bob Dole in 1996, George W. Bush in 2000 and 2004, John McCain in 2008, Mitt Romney in 2012. And then came 2016. When Donald Trump announced that he wanted to seek the Republican presidential nomination back in, I think, the summer of 2015, uh, I was skeptical, but I was open to see what he had to say. Unfortunately, it didn't take long for him to say something that put him off the list for me. Um, just a few days later, he, of course, said what he said about John McCain, something along the lines of, I like people who weren't captured. That, to me, disqualified him as a person seeking the office of Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. I don't know why anybody would say that. I think it's a terrible thing to say for somebody seeking that office about any American serviceman or any American servicewoman. And of course, it only got worse from there. He did, of course, get the nomination, and then I was kind of stuck. I've always voted Republican. What will I do? Well, I live in Tennessee, as I said, and... Uh, I knew that Tennessee would go for Donald Trump, so really my vote didn't matter that much in terms of the Electoral College, and so I voted Libertarian. I voted for Gary Johnson and William Weld. When Donald Trump won, I tried to be optimistic. Uh, I tried to hope that he um, would grow into the office, that he would put good people around him, and that he would put the interest of the country ahead of those of his own, uh, especially in a time of crisis. Unfortunately, I was disappointed at every turn. He not only has not grown in the office, he's gotten smaller. He did hire some good people and then eventually drove them all away, uh, leaving us with a group of mediocrities who were there for no other reason than he agrees with them and they agree with him largely so they can keep their office. And as far as operating in a crisis, I think we've seen this year that Donald Trump puts his ego and his interest in front of those of the country. And that's the reason we are where we are today. So for the first time in my life, I'm going to cast my vote for the Democratic nominee, Joe Biden, something I couldn't believe I would have ever done if you've just told me even a year ago or a few years before that, and certainly not a long time ago. But I'm fine with it. Joe Biden is competent. He's credible. He's a fundamentally decent person. If anybody's got a problem with those things or critics, uh, criticisms of those, then all they need to do, in my view, is compare him to the current occupant in the White House. I thought about going third party. But I think it's important, even though I'm in Tennessee, which will still be in Trump's column, to have as many votes for Joe Biden as possible across the board 
to get the popular vote for him as high as possible, and if he's winning, to get the margin as wide as possible. I know the popular vote does not elect the president, a system I'm perfectly fine with, by the way. I'm fine with the Electoral College. But we all know that if Donald Trump loses, he's not going to go quietly. We need to make the repudiation, if there is one, as strong as possible. I guess in conclusion, I guess I just say that the Republican Party could be the party of Lincoln, the party of Theodore Roosevelt, and the party of Ronald Reagan, or it could be the party of Donald Trump. But it can't be both of those things. I think this election will determine whether the Republican Party has a chance at going back to being what it was or becoming something else altogether. Thanks for watching.